Mr. Robert Workman. Yes. yes. Okay, Thank wonderful. You for Thank you. I appreciate here. that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so Rob is going to talk for 45 minutes, and then we're going to have a Q and A for a half an hour, and then we've got a skedoodle at 1:30 out of here because the library closes at two. Yeah, I might not even need 45 minutes. I think okay. the question answering might be more of the longer term. If you find some ideas, what you need to do to uh, mitigate the house. So, of course, my name is Robert Workman. Um, I am a building biologist, and uh, my story is pretty interesting. Um, I did bring some notes along today that we can kind of stay on cue a little bit better than the past. So uh, I'm going to kind of read from this first so that way I can kind of get some things out to make sure I don't miss. But uh, um, I had my very first symptom for, from, from electrohypersensitivity in 1996. Um, my body started uh, having some tingling of the, of the fingers um, and I actually had some white spots on my skin that developed that doctors really didn't know what that was. Well when I saw Dr. Kassar in Hilo, Hawaii, he says, no, that's actually the death cycle because what the microwave radiation does, it activates the death cycle. It thinks your body's dying, so it creates these white spots. So I thought that was pretty interesting. He had a, of course, I was in his truck driving to Home, uh, driving to home Depot and, and uh, helped him out a little bit. And he put my hand on his shoulder and he said, wait a few minutes, I'm gonna show you a few more things. So we'll get back to that in a second. But so the industry just so, just so happened went from 1G to 2G. Now, I did not know that until I read the book uh, called The Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Furstenberg, which in my final class in Santa Fe, New Mexico, Arthur came and spoke. And he's been doing this since 1978. He's been actually working on this because as, he, as him being a, a potential medical doctor, he would get graduated from Cambridge University but by 1981, 80, or 1979, 70, 70, 91, he came down with electro hypersensitivity due to MRI equipment and electro, electro equipment you have to use in order to be a doctor. So that was um, white spot. 2006, I also developed a constant pressure in my right ear, and I went to several of the top uh, chronic IOS media doctors, Dr. Herzog, which did a fabulous job, he's an amazing doctor, and also Dr. Peter Smith, and I, I complained that my right ear was, I couldn't hear, and for out of the blue, woke up and had no idea what was going on, I couldn't hear anybody. So I was pretty desperate being in sales, running a, a large company that if you can't hear your customers and can't communicate, you're not gonna do very well in sales. So I went through with three surgeries and with no avail, nothing changed, and I kept telling them, my, my, my pressure down here is not in here, it's right down here. So they don't know what's going on, they did the best they could do. So I moved through with that um, in, in two, 2015. I had three major events in my life. Um, and where at those three major events, my body and my mind pretty much collapsed. And I wasn't able to function much anymore. Almost like I had post-traumatic stress syndrome, kind of like the military has. Um, and what's interesting about post-traumatic stress with the military, it almost never happens with the Air Force or Navy. It always happens with the Marines and Army because they are typically around a lot of air conditioning um, units which put out their electricity from the um, generators. And we're now connecting through a lot of great resources that the guys who are exposed to dirty electricity, which is destroying your immune system and your electrical system down and just accumulate just like it did to me. Everything was fine, really didn't know what was going on, just kept going with my life. And then one day, um, I couldn't function. Well, when, the, when the, in the military, when you see some, your, your, your um, friend get, just get shot up, obviously that's a shock. Then that, that immune system gets shut down and they call it post-traumatic stress syndrome. Um, uh, probably is connected to a little bit of the dirt electricity that's actually being used um, to, to, to cool those uh, barracks down because I was told they spent about $3 billion just on the air conditioning bill. And those are in the in the military, pretty interesting. So um, we know now three to three to ten percent will have a, will be affected at the at the highest level. Three to ten percent will lose everything. I tell you, they will. Uh, they will not be able to work. They won't be able to function in today's society. It will cost you about two to four thousand dollars a month uh, of medical care expenses that will not be covered um, by your medical uh, um, um, insurance. Um, you'll probably, the divorce rate's always at 50% when you come down with that, because you're only going to provide for your family and they're not going to really understand what's going on. Um, 
you know, I wasn't really able to piece together the puzzle, like I said, until I, until I met Arthur Furstenberg. And when Arthur spoke, um, of course, he read, read the book. Um, uh, he, he actually wrote the book, The Invisible Rainbow. But he actually did a real good epidemiology report on the history of electricity. Um, and the book talks about Dr. Samuel Milham, which Dr. Samuel Milham has actually one that really connected the connection with the, with the military and uh, uh, electro hypersensitivity and uh, PTS. And dirt electricity is a big, a huge problem. I'm going to get more into that here. Um, but the grid, and if you tell, from 1877 is when ma most of all these uh, major medical problems like diabetes and cancer, almost none of that existed. It's really an interesting phenomenon. When I read this book, and he has it all documented, and I guarantee it would be in history and museum soon, it's the most well-written book I've ever read in my life, and I've written thousands of books. As my boss used to tell me, or mentors, is, he says, leaders are readers. We read all the time. So in my previous occupation, we had to read a book, uh, read something of a book every day. So in uh, 1889, AC current was harnessed by Nikola Tesla. It went from no use to intense use of AC current. In 1889, this so happened, was the year that the great first uh, great influenza epidemic, it went worldwide. It killed two million people. Um, let's fast forward to 1918, which, there we go. Let me find my little notes here. Fast forward to 1918. I apologize, I've kind of skipped the page here. Wasn't really going to go. So that was when the next, uh, uh, next uh, flu epidemic has started as well. And that's when actually when we started laying more, more lines for more, more electricity. So um, I'm going to come kind of back. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. The Spanish flu. That's what I was going to get to. The Spanish flu. When it went worldwide, when the radio waves uh, started being launched, um, electromagnetic fields, that's why it became so deadly. And of course, I'm reading from the notes here to get moved through here. So historical progression, 1957, 1958 was the, was the um, erection of the incredible, powerful civil defense radar station, which coincided with the next influenza. 1968 was the first launch of a military satellite that coincided with the Hong Kong flu. Um, Arthur is actually the president of the Digital Cellular Phone Task Force. So what he's done in use epid epidemiology reports is he actually looked at the grid. So when they electrified the cities and then took the reports of cancer and diabetes and other illnesses and diseases, and then looked at the, the, the off grid in the same areas like farmland, most of the farmland was not Outside the city, it was not electrified until after 19, until 1950. When those areas were being, then became electrified, the cancer rates tripled, quadrupled, sometimes even 16 times higher than it was before it was electrified. So with us being electrical machines, we're, we're electricity, the earth is electricity. It's why the lightnings don't strike from up down, they strike from down up. Because the Earth is actually absorbing, it's like a big, huge pyramid of electricity flowing through us, those through our feet, up through our, up through our brain, out, out through the top of the ionosphere, back down. So whenever we start launching satellites, which is going to increasing the potential for the electrical grid of the Earth in the, in the ionosphere, we have a, we have a uh, biofield, the Earth has a biofield, we're all connected to that. We start adding extra uh, detriments, uh, other activity in that grid, just like it's done for the past uh, 150 years since, uh, since uh, Nikola Tesla did, invented AC, AC current, we're looking for a disaster. And that's not actually saying things too, too lightly or too heavily, that's saying it, saying it mildly, mildly. So the nice thing about building biology is it was actually founded in 1970, area after the war, post wars in Germany. And a lot of, after they built the, after they built the buildings after, 19, uh, in, after the war, people started getting sick. So they started, as, as a building biology, they started keeping these notes and records and found out there was a connection between our bodies and the, and, and the house. So as I like to say sometimes when Winston, Winston Churchill once said, you build a house, a house that builds you. And we know that if your electrical system is messed up in any way, if you have dirt electricity in the house's electrical system, 
it now feeds your electrical systems. And of course, we are electrical machines. So for electrical machines, and it's being fed something dirty or off, off kilter, it's gonna affect how we can actually heal or, or feel good or depression, what have you. So as a building biologist, what we do is we'd like to go in and look at the, at, at the house in a couple of different ways. We like to look at the electrical fields, the magnetic fields, um, the radiation, the, the dirty electricity um, of, of each part of the house and find out uh, what part of the house is up meet building biology standards. But unfortunately, uh, most houses today, it's probably the most dangerous place to be in the world. And the reason why that is, is in warfare, you want to keep the enemy away <laughs> in their side of the ter ter territory, not in your house. So what we've done with technology, we brought that, uh, that enemy into our house. And we feel that the cell phone towers are the biggest culprit or issue with uh, radio or, or radiation, and it's actually not. <laughs> it's actually the, what, you, what we brought into our homes uh, from a few different ways. Number one is through the cell phones. Uh, number two is your Wi-Fi router. And according to Dr. Klinghart, my doctor, who really helped me get on track as well, Wi-Fi is a destructive 2.4 gigahertz frequency it was designed for destruction. That's all it was designed for. <laughs> I mean, you, you use it in England um, for docile to numb down the population. We also know that the uh, military contractor called Thrasher invented the 900 megahertz frequency, which is your cordless phones. And what that frequency does, it's specifically designed to open your blood-brain barrier. Now, all EMFs open your blood brain barrier, it will leak. But that one's specifically designed for that. And a 2.4 is specifically designed for <laughs> numbing the population down and sterilization. That's what it was designed for, and there's uh, plenty of science behind that now. So, when you look at a combination of a 2.4, a 900 gigahertz, or 900 megahertz frequencies, you combine those together, then you add Monsanto's little deal when you have Roundup um, added to the equation. What that has done is now stripped our foods from any minerals, including our cells, and it's specifically designed to take the aluminum that's in your system and inject it in your brain. I find that pretty coincidental or a little bit suspicious that that's what it's designed to do or what it has been doing. So what, what I have found is if you can reduce the exposure of what we bring into the house, first of all, you can have some, a lot better chances now of having some ability to um, get better or heal. The 2.4 gigahertz frequency um, also, and the 900 megahertz frequency, the only two frequencies in the world that you do not have to have, have, to have a license to use. The government loves to make money on these licenses. That's where all these different frequencies are being sold now. Uh, so, uh, so the government makes money. The FCC now obviously hands those out because they have their they have their uh, they have their they have their agenda. So what we can do is eliminate the Wi-Fi in your house. You can reduce your exposure by not bringing the phones into the home or please put on airplane mode. Get a, get a landline and you're now going to enable again your body ability to recover. What I've noticed with some time of meeting my customers and then following the protocols or finding a mitigation recipe that I usually recommend for them, one thing you'll notice is the 2.4 gigahertz frequency is also designed to fatten you up. That's what it's designed to do. It will make a, it will make a rat get fat and it will kill it in, in 90 days. It will not eat anymore after 90 days. At the two point, at, which is about 60 years of exposure for us. So I have a client and she was willing to do this for me. I said, would you please sleep in your basement <laughs> for three months and let me know what happens. And so she turned off, uh, cause she couldn't get away from all the radiation. She was just exposed too much, but she had a nine foot pour 
and she slept in her basement for 90 days. And I said, what happened? She goes, I lost 20 pounds. And she did nothing else. She still ate candy bars. <laughs> so do what she normally do, but she lost 20 pounds. I said, well, that's because you're not being radiated. Because in the basement, luckily because it was unfinished, she didn't have the, um, cr uh, she didn't have what I call power lines, 120 volt power lines wrapped around your house. Which is another pretty interesting thing about what we've done to ourselves. We have this box, which is, which is on life support. Because unless we have an air conditioning cooler, that box won't really work very well. It's not like it's, we have a, a clay or, or a straw, a straw clay type houses. They're all real thin and it's all, you know, he didn't cool it. Then we put power lines around there. People keep saying, well, I don't want to be close to those power lines behind my house. I want you to come to my home and see what type of radiation comes from that power line. I go, let me tell you something. <laughs> Well, your, your bedroom is going to be 15 times worse than those power lines. I can tell you that right now. Why? Because you have, a, you, have, you have an alarm clock there. And then that alarm clock goes through, goes into that 120 volt socket. And then now what it does, it then comes into the, it comes into the, to the, uh, to your, to your um, clock. And the electrical fields from that, from that line is, is usually 20, 30 times higher than being right below power lines. Because that is a power line. It's just a different voltage, but it's a power line. And then you have your power lines wrapped around your house, and then they, they, they pulsate in six feet. And when you pulsate in six feet, then you add your electricity to it. And where does your electricity come from? It comes from a few different things. Switch mode power supplies. Everybody has them now because our computers, our, um, our, our, our uh, of course, smart meters, they have to go from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. They don't run on, they're not lineal. They run on a different higher low, but that switch, that's a download them to lower voltages. When they do that, they inject dirt electricity back in your lines. And now that we have our, 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 our bonding wire or system ground, which goes from your box to your water pipe for a case of a lightning strike, well, all your, all your garbage now goes into the, into the bond, into your pipes and travels into your neighbor's house. And then what your neighbor does gets in, gets in the lines and he starts traveling around and goes in your house. So you have a lot of millivolts worth of dirt electricity traveling all throughout the grid. Then we also got the neutrals now from the power company because they want to save some money. They don't want to spend the money to go from your house to the, to the substation. They want to go ahead and save money. So what they do is they just run it right on the ground because the ground's a great conductor. It travels right back to the substation. The problem with this, when you do all that, all that dirt electricity gets back in the grid again and gets transferred back. Um, go ahead. What do, you, what do you mean by dirty electricity? Well, dirty electricity is just generated. What it is, we have a 60 cycle circuit up and down. 60 cycle, 120 volt, goes 60 up, 60 down. Whenever we have the switch small power supplies of any sort, it creates what we call dirty electricity. It's, it's higher harmonics or transients. We call it dirt that gets on top of that 60 hertz. And they're using in the kilohertz range, two kilohertz and, and the harmonic and they keep bouncing on top of each other. Um, then you also have your inverters from your solar panels now. You think, well, we want to be green, right? That's why we get solar panels. Well, unfortunately, it might, you might be green, but you're now adding a tremendous amount of dirty electricity back into the grid because the inverters are adding into the 20,000 or 20 kilohertz, kilo, kilohertz worth of dirt electricity, and they ride on top of each other, and it just travels around like one big happy family. Um, did that kind of answer your question there? Okay. So we would, if the ideal thing to do, I have a customer now that I work with right now in, Maryland, in, the, in the Webster Groves. Um, she contacted me. And what we're doing, we're removing her, uh, we're removing her, uh, her, her 200 amp service off her bedroom to the back of the house. We had to deal with Kirkwood right now and deal with, and deal with them. It took forever. Ideally, I wanted to get it off the house and set up like a cage and put up her smart meter because, you know, or the non RF smart meter, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we might actually want to put in the analog meter, okay, which is a real, the analog meter has a, it has a, has a filter built into it so it doesn't go back into the grid. I wanted to run into that, run over there into the, uh, into the uh, digital or the um, electrical meter, uh, a smart meter, and do that way. But they wouldn't let me do that. So I, ha I have to attach it to the house. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to run it, and we're also going to run her, her cables, in, in what we call MC cable, which is aluminum uh, clad around, the, around your wires. That way the electrical field does not pulsate into your house six feet from all around the house. Now in your, uh, your, 
uh, hospitals, um, uh, I think even hotels, they require it to be wrapped in the MC cable. But now we use Romax. And the problem with Romax is only when you have a hot wire running to the load, then you have a neutral which comes back. As long as those wires are close together, um, it eliminates what we call magnetic fields. Okay, and they stay close together, like real tight. Now, if you use a knob and two wires, like we did years ago, then you create huge magnetic fields that get spread apart. The reason why the utility companies have the hot and, the hot and neutral spread apart because can't, they can't bond them together up there because it wears out and it would actually you know, cause issues, so they spread them out. That's why if you get below a power line, you usually have high magnetic fields because those lines are far apart plus the voltage is in the 700,000 volts, 120,000 volts. So by putting them close together, you're eliminating the magnetic field. The problem is it does not eliminate the electrical fields. And you don't have to have any current to have an uh, uh, electrical field. Um, this long as you have power, as long as you have power behind it. But if you add a, a aluminum clad over it, okay, you eliminate those electrical fields, which helps to eliminate the, the dirt electricity because it can't travel through that. So it all rides on top of each other. Okay, go ahead. I just wanted to say a couple more things about dirt electricity. Uh, almost all appliances develop somewhat dirt electricity. Okay, it's getting there. But like the smart meter, it actually produces more dirty electricity. Okay, and actually you pay for that. It's not, it, it's, you pay for it, but it does nothing for you. You don't really get the electric use of the electricity. It's just, that's why they call it dirty. It's just, like Dave would say, foam on top of a, uh, off the top of beer. It means nothing, okay? But it costs you more, and uh, uh, that's, that's why. <laughs> yeah, so when you, so when the utility company saves and not run the neutral back to the, back to the power stations, um, there, then now there's more dirt electricity into the grid, and then you get charged for that again. So your utility bill is about 15 to 20 percent higher than probably what it really should be. So what you can do to mitigate that is you can add in a filter, uh, like a static filter, into the uh, actual at the box in your house, uh, which will actually filter the whole house. So a DNA filter, which I'm a big fan of. You have your Stetson filters, um, and they the, the DNA filters and the static filters, for example, they do a really good job by cleaning that up for you. So you don't get charged for that, that, that additional dirt electricity. And I've had, I've had clients have actually saved um, where their bill was $900 a month because they, they had like a health, it was like a health spa type place. So it was really high because of all the electricity. And they were dropped down to like 400 a month once they, once they include, put in the static, static electricity. Yeah, so she's been this, in, in an alternative health care provider kind of off the grid uh, for about 20 years now. And she just couldn't believe the difference that she saved just by putting that thing in. This is before I even got involved in this business and we were just talking about it. And he said, oh, I have a static filter that was put in. This is what, I, this is what I've noticed so far. Go ahead. Could you repeat the names of those filters? Uh, static, static filter. Um, there's also a filter that I work with closely with with a gentleman named Bill Bathgate. Um, he actually came to uh, St. Louis here recently. Uh, he, his website is DE, like Dirty Electricity, DE Filters. LLC.com, and that's his website. You can get the get the DNA filter, which there's also a sign tamer, S-I-N-E tamer filter, a little bit less expensive uh, filter that you can get. Uh, but we find that so far that in St. Louis, because of all what's going on, especially with the inverters from the um, uh, the solar panels, are really creating a lot of problems. Wind turbines are a complete nightmare. You know, for people who live out there, I mean, the cows won't even won't even produce milk in those areas where wind, wind turbine. Oh, sounds great. Oh, good. So, but you know, there's already free energy out there, so I'm a little suspicious that you know, also this is a good idea that we're trying to be green, but then there's free energy out there anyway. You can make, you can produce this stuff in gasoline. There's ways you can produce um, the stuff for no cost. Rob, are these filters something that like I could install myself, or do I have to have a professional come out? That's a good question. Um, actually, the, the DNA filter, there's two ways you can install it. I'm actually currently renting where I'm at now, so I just plug them in the wall. There's only two of them. Um, but ideally, you want to plug, you have them installed in your, your panel and maybe have an electrician just do a minor, put two um, outlets right by, by your panel. One goes to one side of the leg, the other side of the leg, so two sides of the panel. Just install it there. And, and uh, it can be installed there by a recommended electrician. I mean, you can do it yourself. 
but um, depends how much electrical work you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other question I have is, like, could you give us a little bit more background information about how these things operate or how they, how they actually work to, to tame the electricity? Or, or keep yeah, the there's, there's a few different ways. Well, I, um, I try to keep the broad strokes. I actually have some written down that I could probably uh, could have got out to explain this better. But there's one, the Stetson filter, what it does, it takes the dirt electricity and sends it to the ground. There's a hot, there's a neutral, which brings it back to the, back to the, back, back to the substation. Um, and then there's a the ground, okay, where that goes to ground where it sends it to. The DNA filter, it, the way it's set up, I don't know exact specifics how to explain it, but it basically dissipates it. So there's no heating that's built up. It doesn't go to ground. So it's a little more expensive filter. It seems like it does a little bit better job. And a sign tamer, well, Bill Bathgate was here. He's an engineer, I'm not. He could explain a little better than, better than that. He wrote it down for me, but sometimes I'm like, okay, that sounds good. Good, bad, good, bad. I'll <laughs> keep it simple. Um, but that's a very good question, by the way. But if we had to know, I could have Bill uh, contact you. Will, will it also, will it help reduce with the, the electromagnetic frequency that's coming from the wires? Will it help reduce the radiation coming from the wires that are wrapped around this? Will, that, will those filters help? With that? Well, that's a good question, actually. Too. It will help prevent the dirty electricity, which is zapping you. You have to understand, right now, we're getting hammered six feet this way, six feet around here. If you have something underneath here, you're getting hammered this way too. It's 60 cycles a second, it's hitting. And our, we work on zero to 100 hertz. We are an analog being, not a digital being. So we're working on zero to 100 hertz. All those years, why the grid started creating cancer and creating diabetes and raise your blood sugar levels. I mean, heck, it's in, I, got, I always call it the manual. I got the 1971 uh, Nava Medical Institute <laughs> Um, of all the non-ionized radiation um, uh, studies, uh, it talks about how it creates diabetes, how it, it causes erectile dysfunction, it causes, it causes all that stuff, what this causes. Um, so yes, the, they will eliminate the dirt electricity, but we're still getting the other type of radiation too, as, radiation too as well. So unless you either wrap it, so what I usually have to do is, people don't want to rewire their houses, or my last client, I mean, Amy's gonna spend seventeen thousand dollars to get all this done, but but she's buying the home. It's a half million dollar house, so she feels like you know what, I want to die, and she would have died in that thing. I mean, the way it was set up, she had her magnetic fields were over five in her bedroom. She had a, she has current coming through the pipes, and it's going all through all her wires, and then she's got a digital RF meter, RF like a smart meter in her water pipe, and it's talking to all the other water pipes. You know, it's like it's one one actually gathered all the information, and shoots it back out. To, She's back up to the cell phone uh, station. So six, she was getting 16,000 microwatts with the radiation. Off her, it was a, then it was a oscillating and getting it into her pipes and running all throughout her house. So she had a mess in this thing. So luckily, Bill Bathgate, who went out there with me, had an oscilloscope, which is what um, uh, Sam and Milham likes to use. You can see the dirt electricity in the wires, and it shows it on the oscilloscope. It's really cool. And you can see, oh, this is from dimmer switches. Dimmer switches are a nightmare. They really are bad. Get rid of those things. They cause all kinds of dirty electricity. LED. The reason why your CFLs are so bad for you is first of all, there's mercury in it. So that's gonna that's gonna couple and go right in your body and create a mercury toxic toxicity in your body. Then that, that CFL, that so so-called green light bulb, it vibrates a thousand a hundred thousand times a second. It flickers. So that flickering was what caused the dirty electricity. And gets back into the, in, into your actual grid, and also too gets in your eyes and your in your electrical system. Go ahead. Would I be accurate to think of dirty electricity as higher frequencies? Yes, it, it, it couples on top of. Just eliminating the higher frequencies. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's good. These are all simplistic. Um, yeah, a question: uh, CFLs versus LEDs. The LEDs are a little more benign. Yeah, the newer ones are better. The older ones were a mess. They had switch mode power supplies in the older ones. The new ones are better. The only thing I don't like about the LEDs is the light. The, the oscill it, it, it's still flickering. It. I, have a, I have a nice little uh, meter here. I can go to all the light bulbs <laughs> and, uh, and put my little meter on it. And it tells me how many times it's flickering. So ideally, I want to see 120 volts, 120 volts of uh, flickering on this machine here. But I have LEDs, they're all, they're all over the place. thousands, it bounces all over the place in this thing here. So your real clients love it. And they kick around and kind of point at things. They go, eh. you know, TVs, all these, all these LED TVs, you know, they're a mess. I mean, they really are, unfortunately, to say all that. 
But I'm just really suspicious about these lights because the light from the uh, from that from the from the um, you know, the iPad, and I was spending you know thousands of hours on the phone for for 25 years. I was in my car all day doing home improvement business. So I was getting I was in a big Faraday cage uh, microwave a microwave car because if you are you're in a microwave basically with, with the cell phone on. But my body because I took care of myself, I was able to kind of get through all this um, doing detoxifications about three or four times a year. Um, but then when I we added the added the iPad because my finger was on it for hours a day and training, I, then I was airdropping. And I thought, oh, this is cool. It's just airdropping from that iPad, this pad. I didn't know that thing was putting out 30, 40,000 microwatts with the radiation. And put that perspective, we want to be below 10. And even 10 is really not great, <laughs> okay? But 10 is we feel like you can, you can function in 10 microwatts with the radiation. And you want your house to be no longer than 100 microwatts of radiation. Any place in the home, if ideally. Uh, but when you sleep, you want to be below 10. Well, you're putting out 20, 30,000. Your phone sometimes pulsates, depends on what it's trying to get to, up to 2 million microwatts. Of radiation. That's just a pulse, and usually goes back. It settles down a little bit every time you text. I'm very suspicious about texting too, because it becomes now when you're touching that device, we have a biofield around us. Our biofield works on 10 to 30 gigahertz of uh, it vibrates at 10 million times a second, 10 billion times a second to 30 billion times a second. It's got a biofield. And the, the, all these devices, you know, especially when you get into the millimeter wave, are all working on from 1 to 30 gigahertz um, worth of, uh, of frequencies, which is going to affect into our biofield. It's like the biofield of the Earth, the ionosphere, all the, we're all connected to that stuff. When you start adding the millimeter wave, first of all, the millimeter wave doesn't work anyway. <laughs> I'll go with to tell you, 5G is really 1, 2, and 3, 4G. It's what it is. It's not really the million, it's not really 5G. It's just 1, 2, 3, 4, and they bring it close to your house. And then you have the millimeter wave, so supposedly you have a 5, if you have a, um, a 5G phone, you can download faster and it will work. But as soon as you move your phone a foot, it goes, it goes back to 4G again. So now they got all these devices, now they have all these excuses now to get all these transmitters right outside your house, but it's also got 4G in it. One, two, and three, and four G in it, which now you have got more intense radiation on us twenty four seven. Which all this is going to affect our, our biofields, and also too, you're going to have more potential. The more cell phone towers you have, they have inverters. They go from the AC to DC current. They don't. You know, you can't buy DC current. You have to convert it to DC. Anytime you do that, you inject more dirt electricity into the grid. So that is why we feel that with all this additional radiation. Um, those are going to be some huge consequences uh, coming soon. So, how about you know, we'll watch, if we were all wired, you know, do fiber optics, would that solve like, some of the problems? How okay, I'm, I'm glad you brought that. That's a really good question. And for me, uh, probably six months ago, I said absolutely. If we are all wired, instead of instead of Wi-Fi in the whole earth, said. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, what if we were all wired? If we went to wire and, and went. Totally the fiber optics, if, would that solve the solution? Yes, it could. Um, but the if that's the way it was was actually gonna gonna happen that way, <laughs> it would work because you're not you're not exposing us to all the additional radiation. And, and, and it's supposed to be better, isn't it? It's definitely better, better and faster. There's a reason why Microsoft doesn't use Wi Fi. The reason why banks don't use Wi Fi, because mm -hmm. you you're, you're gonna get your information stolen. So why should I have a device in my house, which is now I have my social security number back on my house again? I remember my grandpa in the 19, I think it was 1982, 83, said, Grandpa Elmer said, I can't believe they put our social security numbers on our driver's license. And look how stupid that was. Now we have more than your social security number. Now they'll every, now does your social security number on your, on your side of your house. They know everything you're doing just by the frequencies of your power on that device, and then it talks to all your TVs, your TVs are talking to them, it becomes like a balance, it's really an interesting phenomenon because these, these digital meters, actually you like to use electronic meters, whenever you try to get your smart meter removed, don't say smart meter, <laughs> say electronic meter, because you use the electronic meter, then you have a better chance of getting it off, say I want a non-electronic meter, I want, a, I want a, a mechanical.
Yeah, there, uh, as Billy Mallow just, this is not, not for publication, but it, we feel it's an assault against any biological living thing on the planet. And I think we should say why the telecom communication doesn't do wires, because it, it would cost more money. Than well, that's right. 1999, according to Barry Trower, which is a microwave weapons expert from the 1960s on, they had a meeting in 1999. They just said, instead of using a, a, a smart elegant way of giving us the information. They decided let's go ahead and use a non-smart uh, way of, of, of transporting information, which is the wireless technology. All wireless technology is toxic for, for anything that's lived on this planet. It will end up killing everything, all the insects. It will kill everything on the planet over time. And we'll just make some, make some changes here per, pretty soon. Um, I think, go ahead. Did that see what's affecting the bees? Yeah, all the bees are dying. Um, they, what, they, what we noticed, and with you, we, Arthur's book, He's a lot smarter than me. He's way above my pay grade. He explains all this in detail from the, from the first transmitter or the first uh, radio tower in 1906. It went up. It was actually on an island. And on the island, uh, they actually call it the white syndrome because when they put the transmitter, put the radio tower up, all the bees died. <laughs> they, all had to be all, they, all, they all collapsed. And then they, that's why they call it the white syndrome. They didn't know what was going on. And what happens is the bees will recuperate, just kind of like we do. If we don't, you know, if we don't, what's really interesting about the microwave, when you mean microwave, you live longer. If you don't die from cancer and all the other stuff, it slows your metabolism down. And that's why my friend, who decided to sleep in the basement, <laughs> got lean. I mean, she did no working out. She got lean. And it, all she was doing is getting away from all the radiation, all the, to all the wires from the house. And I was a personal trainer for six years, so I know more about working out and health and fitness probably than 99% of people I talk to. I, I, that's, I ate and breathed that, slit, uh, that stuff. I was, you know, <laughs> I ran to Vic Tannies in St. Louis for many, many years. I traveled. I was in Kansas City for, for a few years. went to Del Mar, California. I, I was with some of the healthiest people on the planet, including Dr. Robert Kassar, who was a medical doctor back in the back in the 1970s and 80s? His father ran 27 hospitals, and he worked in an emergency room. He says, "Man, there was a problem with this system here." So he became a doctor of chiropractic, then became a parasitologist, and his family owns uh, Big Tobacco. They own uh, the Cretec Corporation. So he kind of started this little this little this little retreat in Hilo, Hawaii, to go ahead and and uh, kind of even out the good and bad. And I'll never forget, I was on my seventh day of not eating. It was a three-week fast. I had to go there for three weeks. It was on my seventh day of not eating. He goes, let me take you into town. I said, okay, sounds good. And he drove his truck, and, and he stopped. And he says, do you feel anything? I go, no, I haven't eaten nothing in seven days. I don't feel nothing. He goes, let me, he drove it about 100 feet higher. And I said, what the hell just happened? He, I said, I'm starving to death. He goes, that's because the death cycle has started. He goes, you're going to focus on Wi-Fi right now. I'll never forget that. And I was starving after that. I was like, God, this is like miserable days. And I was on my seventh day. I said, why did you do that to me? Because ah, I knew you'd get it. Because I'll just stick you back in the, in, I'll lock you in a room, give you the water, you'll be fine. We made it 15 days. But I, that was the most, one of the most interesting phenomena I've ever been through is I was not hungry at all. It's fine. You have to get about the fifth or sixth day. You don't get hungry anymore. You just kind of pass. You're just kind of that new, you're in an aura. You kind of have this new, new feel. Like, oh my God, I feel amazing. I get exposed to Wi-Fi, I thought I was going to die. I mean, I'm really starving to death. Go ahead. So, Ken, I may know, can you explain the difference between when you're near a source, whether it's a, 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 a Wi-Fi router, cell phone tower, and you're reading the radiation that's coming off that source versus being at whatever distance from that and still being exposed to the frequency coming off of that? Yeah, well, there, well obviously, distance is your friend. Okay, um, but with the suspicion that, uh, that I see here in, in America, because in Russia, you can't run the, you have to run the neutral, it has to be big enough to go back to substations. Mm -hmm. In Russia, you're not allowed to have a, 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 a microwave, ever. Really? Yeah, they used to call it radar range. Radar range? Radar range, but that wasn't very sexy, so they tried to change it a little. Anyway, and they found out because when the, when the GIs or the military was by the radar, their, their candy bars would melt. And they said, oh, this is a neat idea. And then they came down microwave sickness. So electrohypersensitivity is really microwave sickness. This is a fancy way to, to turn it back and make you feel like it's your fault. But it's like saying, I'm, I'm sensitive to uh, mercury. I'm sensitive to, I'm sensitive to lead. We would never say that. 
Uh, which, but it's different about uh, peanut allergies and so far as I think someone mentioned maybe earlier, is you can actually get away from that. Like in the 70s, my, my dad used to take me these bars down to Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, just the smoke drove me crazy. And my dad goes, go outside then. No big deal. I went outside and got away from it. You can't do that now. It's everywhere you go. So distance is your friend, okay? Um, but your Wi-Fi in your house is usually many more times more powerful than the cell phone tower is because it puts out about three or four hundred thousand microwatts of the radiation distance to your friend so it you my average house they go into if they had the wi-fi on i never get it below three or four hundred microwatts ever unless they're really you know unless they're really far away but in the office you have your computers talking to your wi-fi router <laughs> so that's talking there so you got right you got radiation coming from the cube computer then you got radiation coming from the from the from the Wi-Fi router, and it's in the same office. And sometimes they have a oh, then you have your your copy machine. That's a mess, and it's talking. It's it's sending out radiation pulsing. You put them all together, they're 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 sitting in 100 to 300,000 with with, with microwave radiation, uh, all seven you know, all the time. And they're wondering why they're sick and got diabetes and got all these problems. Go ahead. Um, so Bluetooth uh, earbuds. Cell phone, regular wired earbuds. Um, I understand that the uh, earbuds with wires act as a uh, conduit from your cell phone up to your eardrum. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the, the um, um, Bluetooth earbuds are better than putting a cell phone to your ear. No, not. Um, your electrical field, you, know, you have the potentiality to get some issue with cancer through here because of the electrical field from the wire. But what you do is whenever, I saw the more recent studies on those things, you're now putting a, a, a Wi-Fi router, basically, in your ear. And then you put in both ears, they go right through your body. And all the way the science is done on the 5G Summit, uh, one, of the, one of the speakers was talking about the best way, as far as not affecting your biofilm, but not, not hold the phone with one hand, but hold two. It's actually better for you, because they can kind of travel through that way. Or one, it mess, the biofield likes like to spark, and there's cameras, you can see your biofield area spark off. And you want to be like a fire, where you have this complete fire around your body, versus a spark, where a spark makes it look like it's going out, going out, like a fire's going out. So when you add the Bluetooth of any sort, you're, that's going right through your system, and it's going to run through your brain. So no, I would recommend the, the wired much better than I would recommend the Bluetooth, especially those 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 um, those um, those um, little watches that people are wearing now more than ever. You're going to start seeing that's in your chakra, so that's not very smart. But you know you don't know what you don't know. So that that's going to go through your system. Well, you're going to start seeing rashes. Um, Larry Gus, you saw this spoke. He's one, he taught me a lot of this stuff. I went. You know, obviously he's my teacher. Um, so Larry talked about how his lot of his clients are getting rashes up through here. And that's usually the first sign of EHS, or electro hypersensitivity, is you start scratching all the time. <laughs> and you get candida and you get fungus issues, because um, that's what it does. Go ahead. And, and this kind of Bluetooth ear, with a wire to the ear, what are your thoughts on that? Or it just goes around your neck and you have a wire to the ear? Uh, but it's still Bluetooth from there to your the phone. Yeah. Any wireless of anything is not good. You just want to get rid of it. Is you're any anytime you transfer information wireless, you got radiation going on. And we all, I love to measure it, find out how much is coming off that thing. But I'm kind of curious. Uh, go ahead. Like, what about our, and I put it down. Yeah. Uh, Robert, what about our hands? Because I, I have noticed, and I hope it's not my subconscious mind. <laughs> I'd rather it be my subconscious mind, but I'm feeling pain in my hands. Well, you're, some of these symptoms, and if you don't mind, I like to kind of uh, pull out something here really quick. But... This is, I think, I call this the cell phone um, um, guide they didn't tell you about. This is the, <laughs> should be put in every single cell phone. Uh, these studies went back to 1926, put up by the U.S. military. And who did the cell phone industry buy the uh, technology from? Oh, the U.S. military. And what does the U.S. What does the military usually typically want to do? Kill things. <laughs> so. Um, they just sold off, the FCC just sold off the um, 60 gigahertz uh, millimeter wave frequency and it kills all insects. Mm -hmm. They sold it to three different, th 300 different companies. So here, here we are adding something else to kill all the insects here. But one of, these, one of the um, side effects, of the first symptoms of electrical hypersensitivity is, um, is a lot of, 
It's called um, alteration of the diameter of the blood vessels, which is what I have at my peak. I went into uh, St. John's Mercy's and I couldn't said I couldn't drive. I, just, I had MS symptoms. I couldn't walk, and my veins were swollen up because they had these um, the lighting, which I was real sensitive to, which is any of the um, track lightings like this it can make. So it also says elasticity, so it makes you real sensitive to, makes you more sensitive to your, to anything that's electric as well too, almost like it pops. Like when I touch my iPad, I feel like my fingers are on fire. Um, but I just don't touch the iPad anymore. <laughs> so it's pretty, pretty, pretty simplistic here. But bone marrow issues, um, brain issues, sinuses, um, you decrease electrical resistance of the skin, alter penile function, reduce, reduce um, um, urine, alter blood flow rate. My, my, it's funny because when I was seeing my doctors, um, my, my veins are swelled one minute, then they, next minute later they shrink back down. And that's what this stuff does. It, this does all kinds of crazy things. Dehydration, death, <laughs> one of those side effects of. Um, it's, uh, there's over 8,000 studies. This is 1,800 of the studies here. It's called the Naval Medical Research Institute. Well, that's the name. That's the people who did it. Right. But I mean, does that particular report have a name, a title? Well, I, I would just look up the National Technical Information Service, possibly, or the Naval Medical Research Institute. I'm not that smart, so I just yeah, know I, this I, is I what it is. Those things. NPIS is yeah. yeah. just a place to go find studies, but it's not the name of the study. Yeah, yeah you can go to the, um, you're going to find this right here. I mean, it's no, I just know these people did the study. Mm -hmm. So it's military. I would just uh, like to say, Dave and I had a lot of weird stuff over those years. Because, you know, you don't pay attention to all this stuff that happens to you. I mean, you know, and when, but we looked at everything of all the weird stuff that mm -hmm. happened. I broke out with things on my head. My head was, I, I don't know, it was just weird. And, and Dave broke out in a rash one time, too. Uh, uh, and just different things that, I, you know, I just, I mean, there's a lot of, you just don't, you know, we don't think, we, don't, we pay attention to every little thing. We'd probably be really a lot worse off. We were already healthy. We were already into the health food and eating organic and everything you can imagine, you know. So we would have been a lot worse off if, if we hadn't been doing that. So let me get into the mechanism in a minute, too. Go ahead. Robert, please mention about how if you hold a cell phone next to a beehive, all the bees... Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, food yeah, supply. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Uh, die in the insects. Well... Yeah, actually, when I said Dr. Kassar, he had a beehive down there, and he wouldn't do it for in front of us because his bees won't come back. But well, we do know if you put a, a, you put a cell phone by a beehive, within five to ten days, it completely collapse, collapses. It only takes five days, they're, they're done. And usually they won't come back. Uh, we do know that for sure. I actually just read a study on that. I have it with me someplace. I just looked it up. If you go to Arthur Furstenberg's, so like go to Arthur Furstenberg, go to his website, his Arthur Furstenberg pops up, has all the studies on the bees. Talking about the beehive study, the whole nine yards, but what they start making special noises for about a, these noises for about a week, a day or two. They met this noise. There's like, no, I bet the hives know we're going to swarm and leave here real soon. Also, I saw a video where the people trying to do the 5G are cutting down the mature trees where the birds live and the insects live, mm -hmm. so that they can do the 5G. Which is yeah, that's in the UK. That's in the UK. Yeah, doing a lot of that in the UK. Um, so according to Barry Trower, uh, through his studies as well, the, the, uh, the, the bees only really pollinate about 20 to 30 percent of all of our stuff. All of our, but 70 to 80 percent comes from the insects. Because they, they creepy crawlers, they crawl on it. And they're there, and, it, and that's how they actually pollinate. So we do know that for sure um, that our insect population is down tremendously. I mean, you will never find insects around these light poles anymore. Why? Because they're using LED. Right. And LED, uh, that, I, mean, I mean, if you stare, I wouldn't want to ask anybody to do that. If you stare at a thing for a full minute, I guarantee you have, you'll have, uh, you'll have uh, eye damage. I guarantee it. Because I got the testing material, material instruments to test these things out, and they're, and they're really off the charts. Yeah, so I'm really suspicious about that. Well, that's another part of the uh, dilemma because we're, the people are going to have to clean these windows. On, on these uh, on the medical buildings or any windows of any building, those cell phone tower or uh, speakers, I like to call them, are right there on those buildings. So how are they gonna clean around them? We're gonna shut it off. They're not gonna shut it off. They'll, they'll be right there exposed. Well, even the people installing their phones, aren't they? Well, yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, they have to. Yeah, I don't know if they would protect their gear or not. But that's another whole another animal. It's like you know, this, this is bad enough the way it is. 
Uh, Which light bulb do you recommend us use? What's that? Which light bulb do you recommend? The regular old-fashioned halogen light bulbs or your incandescent light bulbs. <laughs> they put out more heat, they're not as efficient, but they're way better for your electricity and they won't kill you. <laughs> but just so you know, uh, LED, the, ink, the EcoSmarts seem to be okay. One of the tested those out. EcoSmarts Eco tend to be okay. Um, but we found out that the, the Kelvin, the Kelvin needs to be below 2700. Yeah. No. No. What was the Kelvin? Three thousand or below. You need to be three thousand or below. So, before we run out of time, I want to at least get this part here. So we do know the mechanism now that makes all this thing tick. That we know for sure that the microwave radiation, one hundred percent without any question, um, will damage you. It's not a it's not a matter of if. We know the mechanism now. And the mechanism is, is when you have a cell, y'all, and you put it to a big cell in your mind for a second here, and you have on the inside of that cell, on the outside of the wall, let's say, you have a plasma, and then you have the what do you call? Uh, we call them, I call them gatekeepers. Um, I think there's a special name for them. It's in my building biology book over here, and those gatekeepers, and everything works on electricity. So as Dr. Klinghart taught me, he says no such thing as a bad or or, or good uh, organism in your body. They all talk to each other and they're all friends. But when you add, you add uh, radiation to it, they, they don't become friends anymore. But what happens is the bad becomes really extremely aggressive. So when you, when you expose yourself to microwave radiation, those gatekeepers know when to open, when to close. Normally, let, let proper amount of calcium come into those cells, nitric oxide to go into those cells, and then it also helps uh, regulate your blood-brain barrier. When you add microwave radiation of any sort, you now confuse those gatekeepers. And Dr. Martin Paul has got the more elaborate version of my explanation here of how that works. And pretty soon one day, one day you touch your phone, touch your phone one day, those gatekeepers stay open permanently. And that's when the Lyme disease shows up. That's when the mold shows up. That's when the blood brain barrier opens up. Um, and so then you add 900 megahertz frequency, which opens it up anyway. And then you have a bunch of drivers like gl the glyphosate mm -hmm. added to the equation. And that's why we're in this, you know, kind of the, the situation where we're sometimes so sick you can't even, you can't even do nothing about it. You're just in stuck bone. You don't want to, you, you, you get so numb down, you don't even want to deal with this. My average person, unless you're sick, doesn't want to hear about this. I don't blame them. Who wants to hear about this stuff? Because you're so tired of it. And that's just where we're at right now. And what the microwave would do to us over time, it makes you very, very less likely to fight back. That's why it was used <laughs> in the military, unfortunately. It's just keep it, keep it simple. It, not, it makes you stupid as well. It makes you keep, you cannot cross your right and left brains. You're the right brain or left brain with microwave radiation. You can't be both. And you want to cross them if possible. That way you're not to this side or to that side. And as Dr. Robert Castaro taught me, is when we did that fast, he was trying to cross our left and right brains. That way we can see through different goggles and see what he calls the truth versus, you know, they're, they're here. But microwave has a tendency to um, dumb us down. So uh, that is why that's the mechanism. And you can go to Dr. Martin Paul's website and look at his material, how to perfectly explain all that. But just keep it simple. That's where all this comes down to. Um, we know for sure this is actually damaging uh, our, our bodies because of the uh, gatekeepers and the, it's called calcium, calcium gated, uh, the voltage gated calcium channels. And we have seven of those and plants have one. And what we know when you expose plants uh, to uh, microwave radiation, that uh, voltage gated calcium channel creates something in a plant where it creates turpentines. And these turpentines actually in the right occasion the plant will just explode and turn into fire. And they're wondering why we're having these weird fires in California. Well, when you're exposing everything to microwave radiation, they start producing these turpentines, and then you now you light a fire on top of it. We're very suspicious about those, why those fires have gotten worse because of the voltage gated calcium channels of plants, too. I have videos of this, so we do have a lot of destruction with. Uh, uh, usually your our spruce trees, pine trees, because of the way the physics works, the skinnier you are, the more likely for the radiation to affect you. This is the way physics works. The more mass you have, 
Well, I would recommend keep it because, because it's, going to, it's going to affect you less likely. You know, every every uh, health clinic I went to, when I talked to the sickest people, one was a Boeing engineer, I forget, he had tears in his eyes. And he said, I don't know how much longer I'm going to take this. And they're always real skinny. And you're always like to eat like two foods. <laughs> that's all you eat, two foods, you know, vegetable and a vegetable. That's about it. And because that's what the that's what that's what the microwave radiation does. It makes you have makes you get, have create tons of food allergies. Um, so, any more questions? Uh -huh. Do you happen to have a business card? Yeah, I do have business cards, and I got some uh, flyers. I, I have to go. To yep, absolutely. Yeah, let me go ahead and. Uh, I'd love to have a card. And thank you very much for coming. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Here you can just take a couple of those things thank if you you'd like. Know. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Any more questions? Contact yes. Life. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get out earlier. When I was in the hospital at St. John's Mercy. That's one thing they have going. I, my my veins is swelled up, and that's I was so pretty bad shape then. So I was sensitive to everything, including my car. Your car is a big booby trap, by the way. We can get to that too if you like. But your car is a, is, is a complete death trap. <laughs> I was thinking because what those things put out. We can get into that. But yes, they're they're bad. So they create a tremendous amount of them because switch mode power supplies go from they go from the AC to DC current. They they volt they, they bring the voltage down so it runs. It creates a, a tremendous. I've seen just turn off one of those things, and it went from two or three thousand two thousand uh, mic, uh, millivolts worth of radiation down to down to hundred of dirty electricity throughout the house. They put out, they produce a tremendous amount of dirty electricity from what I've seen so far. Go ahead. I have a question. I have an older home that's got knob and tube wiring. Well, knob and tube, man, that's a great question, actually. I was just having uh, talking to, to Tim Bird at Bird Electric. And Bird Electric is actually at Isaac working together on uh, making these homes safer. I'm, tr I'm training him right now. I am actually have another trainer, another EMF uh, named Andrew uh, McAfee. He's an uh, electrician, but he's also an expert in this. The guy's brilliant. I met him in a house in uh, Nashville, Tennessee for a music star. It was kind of fun. I thought I was into movies. And it's felt like I was in the movies. We worked, I worked there together. But knob and two, because they're far apart, they put out a tremendous amount of, of um, magnetic fields. And I don't know, I haven't tested them for dirt electricity, so I don't really know how that would be any different with that. It might be the same. But I just knew. You could probably maybe try to filter it. I'd have to do some research on that. I'd like to check into that. I talked to Orrin Miller uh, or I talked to Bill Bathgate about that because they would know more about the knob and two. We just know that it, you can't really fix it. And what happened, but just so you know, I, I, eight out of 10 of my houses have had what we call miswires. And even my electrician, Tim Bird, who's 30 years, didn't understand, know this. It's a code violation. When you have two different circuits go into a, a, a junction box of any sort and then they go to two different ways. Or they come in there and come in and they, they bind these neutrals together from two different circuits. Well, then you have potentiality for a current. So instead of going this way, then one goes this way, wraps around the whole entire room, and the whole room becomes that, that those, those um, power lines then. You have huge magnetic fields like knob and tube, but one's over there, one's over here. And you have huge magnetic fields. And that's what happens to some of these people. So they have these miswires going on. What's that now? I say presently the code allows uh, two circuits to share one neutral. Yeah, it's a code violation. You can't do that. Two different two different branch circuits cannot go in and say share it even. And so did Mr. Berger thought the same thing too. I was like, no, you can't do that because what's going to happen there is you're going to the current will go not like it's not like least path it goes everywhere. It's got to, he said, well, if it's the same amperage, you can do that. I said, no, no, you cannot do. And I can show you the code, the code, NAC code on that. You cannot have two different circuits share a neutral. It goes. It creates havoc throughout the house, and I can show you the, the documentation if you'd like to see it. But yeah, it's got to be the same circuit. Go ahead. I want this one question answered today about shun guide. Is anybody? Oh, I, I have. Yeah, Na Nancy it? Hopkins is really big about that. Uh, she's wonderful. She works in the uh, U.S. military in the '70s in a microwave weapons department. <laughs> like um, shun guide, shun guide. Um, um, well, if anything. I, Okay, shun guide, I believe, is some sort of a mineral. It's a carbon mineral. Okay. Found in Karelia, Russia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've got one too. Yeah. Okay. So, 
know. Well, I know nothing about, about uh, Shungite, but Nancy, and actually my friend Bill Bathke, who's an engineer, very skeptical guy, by the way, because unless he tests it, he don't believe it. it has some health benefits. We know it doesn't have any health benefits for the millimeter wave, but gee, it supposedly does. I've tried out one. I didn't notice any difference yet, but the way Bill said it has to wrap around the entire neck for, he said, for it to work like a pearl necklace. Like a pearl necklace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but I think there's some hope there. And Nancy, if you watch her on Where Did the Bees Go and some of her YouTube stuff, Where Did, Be, Where Did the Bees Go, I think it's called. Um, she's pretty um, low key. I like her. I like, I like listening to her. Sometimes I listen to people. I don't like the way they sound, but, but she, I like to hear a lot. Um, but she talks a lot about Shanghai. And she works, she, she worked in the 70s. She knew all about this microwave stuff. So she's pretty interesting to watch. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. So, did you get into doing what you're doing now? Being sick. Yeah, I got, it's, it's a really interesting story. I'm glad you brought that up because here I am, I uh, had a really good paying job, a really good job for my, for my industry, uh, probably the highest paid in the state, unless I was an owner of a company, I'm um, pretty sure. But it took me 20 years to build that up. Um, so I also was getting sick and I was like feeling like I was dying. And so I, I saw Dr. Simon Yu here. He helped me out, gave me stable, but there was something I was missing. And I said, you know, every time I run my phone, I have problems around my car, the screen from my, from my car area, that's bothering me. Wi-Fi is bothering me. And so you think there's a connection? He just wouldn't really elaborate on that enough. So Dr. Klinghart, I watched some of his videos, they shield their whole office. I mean, the whole place is shielded. And I go, well, heck. And he said, well, if you want to see me, which he doesn't take clients anymore, but he said, if you want to see me personally, unless you're sleeping in that and turn your circuit breakers off, I won't talk to you. I'm wasting my time. I thought that was pretty interesting. He said, we well, need to hire a building biologist. So I get online, and I'm like, who can I find? I've got a hold of Oren Miller. <laughs> and Oren Miller, um, uh, four years ago, um, I said, Oren, I said, would you please come to St. Louis? I'll pay you $3,000. And he remembers the conversation. I said, I'll pay for a flight, I'll give you three grand to come to St. Louis and mitigate my house. And, and uh, he said, well, no, but I'll do it on the phone. So 11 hours later, 11 hours later, $100 an hour, <laughs> I, finally, I finally get my house mitigated. Well, I'm getting radiated the whole time, of course, from holding my phone, you know, because I don't know really any better. I had to buy the equipment, spent hundreds, dozen hours on YouTube figuring this thing out and finally doing it. And I said, okay, I'm ready to go now. A year later, because a year and a half waiting list, a year later was to get to, get to, see, to, go, to go see Dr. Klinghart. Um, that, so that's kind of, that intrigued me. And then I went to Dr. Kassar, did the fast, and went straight there, went to, went to clean our office. They thought I was nuts. They said, you did a three fast before you came here? I said, man, I'm determined. Because <laughs> I was going to lose my job. I mean, I was on, I was on thin ice. You know, I had a real... Seattle? He's in Seattle, yes. Um, it's a beautiful area over there, and it's a, be a beautiful place to go to. I like it. And uh, I can say about Dr. Uh, Simon Yu, though, he's done a good job. I, but he actually tests for it now. And he refers me to some of his patients, so he understands the differences. I tell you, it, it made my symptoms worse because when I was killing the problem, the, the, the radiation fed it, mm -hmm. and it came back stronger. Mm -hmm. Then it came back stronger. Mm -hmm. I literally thought I was going to die. That's how bad it was. I lost 40 pounds of muscle. I, mean, I was a big bodybuilder. You know, I was like, oh, I can squat 500 pounds, you know, big, bend the bars. I was, at the end of my day, I couldn't even squat 130 pounds. I mean, it was like, it was like, I don't know what was going on, man. I just want everything to shut down. So that's kind of how I got into it. And it just intrigued me. And I was like, you know, this is like the funnest thing I've ever done, though. It was like a fun. It's like you're a kid again. You know, so this whole thing is, it should be, you have to make it fun as much as you can. If not, get depressed. It'd make it make it very fun. But I want to kind of elaborate one more time about the hardwiring here in a minute, about hardwiring everything. That's going to help. But it's not going to prevent 5G, and I believe, I, I believe uh, what uh, Arthur says, and I, just think about this. You don't, have to, you don't have to like go off the end when I tell you this. The only way this is ever going to go away, and I believe, and I think Arthur's right on this. He's been studying this for over 30 years, a lot longer than I have. He's way smarter than I am, and guy's a guy's brilliant. I mean, brilliant. When the system was to hide anything from us, and I was taught this by a guy named Kevin Trudeau, then that's a curious guy. He sold more books than, than Harry Potter. I spent personal time with him. It cost me a lot of money to do that too. But I guess he says, look, if the system wants to hide anything from anybody, they make sure it's right in front of your face. They make sure it's really simple. And it'll keep telling it to you over and over again that it's, that, it's, that, it's, that it's okay when it's really not. And if it's in front of your face and it's really simple, that's the problem. So if you think about it, our phones are in our face all day and we're trying to find the solution, but it's right in front of our face. 
and it's smart this, smart that, smart this, smart that, which is really not very smart. But everything I've ever tested that was smart was a disaster. Now, I have a funny acronym for SMART. You, know, you guys don't get mad at me for saying this, but I, I think the S stands for, 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 for secret, the M stands for military, and A stands for ornaments, and R stands for residential, and T stands for te technology, technology. Secret, military, ornaments, and then residential technology. I haven't had any proof on that, but this is kind of way my, I'm able to absorb that in my mind to make sure I don't think that it's okay. <laughs> Because uh, this doesn't seem like anything that they say is okay is really that okay at all. So, go ahead. Are you aware, I saw a commercial that said 5G will be turned on in St. Louis December 9th. Or okay. Whatever date. Okay. Um, December 9th of this year or next it year? Just within the past few weeks. The thing that really alarmed me was I've never had a... I also have been poisoned and no one can understand, but I luckily found an environmental doctor that went right to the fungal and the mold <clears throat> and the different things. But uh, two weeks metals. ago, heavy metals, parasites, two weeks ago, my blood pressure shot up to like 200 over one. I've never had a blood Yeah, that's, that's, that's 5G. Um, yeah, it I does also that. have lost the use of my right hand. Yeah. I, I'm completely electrified. <coughs> um, yeah. I don't, I have Let me say let me get in one more thing about, about, about the 5G. The millimeter way, the way it works, is supposed to be where your skin, first of all, is an antenna. It's the largest organ we have. <laughs> so we're hitting our largest organ with this millimeter wave stuff. And we know that the, we know that the, uh, it's either, yeah, 90 gigahertz, you can evaporate. Well, actually, that's the, that's the, what they use to, for, for crowd control. But 60 gigahertz will evaporate you. This, you're gone. This, 60 gigahertz, you completely evaporate. We, so that's military, that's known as well, too. But what's the problem with it is, is what they don't talk about is it's supposed to travel in your skin, but you have what I call little portals, which is your sweat glands. You have millions of those, if not more than that, millions and billions. So what's going to happen is, is that millimeter waves are going to go in those portals and go throughout your system and create your body to get sick. So that's the <laughs> common sense that's already been tested. You know what's, what's going to happen. So that's a concern we have. That's why people in the UK are giving... Uh, nosebleeds. It's really launched that way up in a uh, called Gateshead. Uh, Gateshead in the UK is they've already now they've already launched the 5G and they're using the um, the the lighting there for the 5G. And unfortunately, it looks like it's got some uh, untested work technology in the lighting too. Go ahead. How do you protect yourself going out and trying to help people the way you're doing? Oh, yeah. How do you help yourself? Well, I, 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 you do a couple things. I mean, I do a lot of stuff uh, to prepare. So I'm mean, actually sleeping in the net, turn my electricity off at night, and you feel like you died and went to heaven. I'm telling you that right now. It's unbelievable how you feel. So actually, the more healthy you are, the more you're going to be affected by um, this, this electro hypersensitivity. Because, because your body is working better and it's more connected to the earth. The good news about the less healthy you are, God bless my sister. She, she eats can bars every day, smokes two cigarettes a day. She ain't affected by it at all. <laughs> God bless her heart. She's got lead, candium, and everything else in her body from the cigarettes. And Dr. Kazar said, well, Rob, there's actually 4,000 chemicals we put in that thing, not just two or three. So you say sleep in the net. Yeah, it's a, it's a net. Um, the cheapest way is sleep in your basement. You've got a nine-foot pour, turn on, there's turn off your lights above. That's great. You get usually below 10 microwatts of radiation in most people's basements. That's a great place to sleep. Um, might be a little cold, but it's a great place to sleep. Unless you, unless you all have a drywall and then drop ceilings and all that stuff, there's a little harder to, to get it where it needs to be, but you need to turn off the electricity then. But that's, so you bought, bought a, um, yeah, it's called Daylight. Yeah, it's called Safe Living Technologies. I got some brochures. Rob Metzer also helped train me. I had four people that trained me. Rob Metzer, Orrin Miller, uh, Larry Gust, um, and then um, uh, uh, Bill Bathgate. Uh, so I sleep in that. Uh, the only problem I notice in the city is I have two meters, and it really takes a science here because some meters read up to a certain point, and some don't go down below a certain point. So when I do my meters, I have to have this one here, which uh, measures from uh, yeah 650 megahertz to 10 gigahertz. This goes up really high to really. We've got five minutes. Okay. Yeah, we got okay. To close up. We got to okay. So I have another meter that goes down to 27 megahertz. So I have to use both of them. What happens is there's a lot of radio waves coming in, and I actually feel the radio waves. Um, the lower, the lower 
uh, frequency type waves. And this doesn't pick up very much of the radio waves at all. They're below the 600, the, the, um, the 650. So that's why I have to use two. Go ahead. What do you but, think about the, and just some radiation going through the net? And then you're switching well, I, I get down to 10, so it's pretty good. So I'll just deal with that. But I have, I, I had to do my house special. I'm in a, in a villa. Villas are problematic, so are apartments, because I, I share a wall with a customer. With a customer, with another, with my neighbor. So she's a customer though, but with my neighbor. So I had to put aluminum foil, I foil and I had to ground it. And by doing that, it prevented electrical fields from coming in because when I turned off my power, it actually made it worse because it wasn't canceling each other out. So I had to, I had to turn on my power, but then ground it, block it, and now it blocks all of it. Go ahead. Do you think, in terms of the question that was asked about protecting yourself, that right now we have RFID walls? Do you think? People will start producing RFID clothing that will protect you. Oh, yeah, there are extras clothing now. There's companies that do millions of hours a year in that clothing. Um, e Less EMF sells clothing. Amazon sells clothing. Uh, my client in Nashville, who's, who, um, who um, I went to her house, he wears it all seven days a week and says swears by it. So not everybody has the same benefit. Go ahead. Well, if it's cloth as far as putting around your body or cloth? Yeah, if it's got some, it's got silver in it of some sort, I mean, sure it works, just get a meter and test it out and just go by how you feel. But I think they, I mean, they all work. I mean, I have a late, one of the girls, Elizabeth, who's, going, who come, who's coming to Building Biologists as well, she lives in uh, Kansas City. When uh, she had, a, she, she had a, a tent that blew up and then she put a cloth over it. And it's like a $30 pen just popped up and she put a little cloth over it and she was able to sleep and it got it down to like one. It was unbelievable.